Hello. Good evening, all of you. Am I audible? Please mention in the chat whether the audio and video is clear. Let me just check. Clear. Okay, just clear. Let me just check. <clears throat> so, welcome back. Today, we are discussing the topic data interpretation as part of the complete course on gate general aptitude. Again, once again, uh, apologies to all of you actually. Uh, daily classes I am not able to take due to health issues. So, uh, the throat issue is still there after as I am taking three classes due to this cough issue I cannot continue for more. So, that is why some days I am taking off. Let me just check whether the chat is visible just a minute. But as the exam is happening very soon, as per the latest update, that is why somehow I am trying to strain myself and still take the class. So, please excuse me for the uh, few days I am taking not class in between. Uh, I will try to be regular as much as possible because daily other three classes are there and I have taken off for one week due to fever and other issues. And due to that, I have to compensate for other classes in my other platform classes also. That is why uh, some irregularity in the number of lectures and daily lectures. So, sorry for that. Okay. So, let us start. Uh, please invite your friends, all of you. Let more people join. We will wait for one or two minutes. By that time, I hope more people will join. So, today we are discussing a very important topic, data interpretation. It is almost like a sure shot question in every question paper. Minimum one question from this chapter. Almost all the question paper you can see minimum one question. For the new students, you can be part of my um, WhatsApp group, Telegram group and Telegram channel for regular updates from me. And whenever I go live for any free classes, not only in this channel, in Unacademy channel daily at 11 a.m. I take free classes. Tomorrow 11 a.m. I will be discussing the topic speed, distance and time at 11 a.m. in the Unacademy YouTube channel. You are welcome to attend that also. If you want updates of all my classes, Either download my mobile application Christie's classes from Play Store or be part of my Telegram channel, Telegram group or WhatsApp group or you can follow the profile in an academy and this YouTube channel classes also. These are the two channels where I take classes more often. Uh, an academy special class platform and an academy YouTube channel and this channel also, uh, this Christie's classes channel. These are the details of my an academy daily free classes. Um, and this is the book I have written for CSCR Net Party. Okay, so without much uh, introduction, let us start today's class. As I told, uh, <clears throat> as uh, daily classes are not going on, I am restricting this course to uh, the number of lectures are being restricted. That is why data interpretation, the plan was to take three sessions with theory uh, discussed in one session and then questions. But now one session or two sessions maximum on data interpretation we can take. Otherwise, uh, before the exam, we cannot complete it. So, please adjust with that. So, data interpretation right away, we will start. Data interpretation means you will be given data representation tools. You have to analyze that and find the answer for the question. Data representation tool means all these are data representation tools. These are the major data representation tools that you see more often and there are other data representation tools, scatter plots. Other than this, scatter plots can come, contour lines can come. All those are there. We will see more questions. So, question will be given as in terms of any of this data representation tool and you have to analyze that and conclude the answer. And while doing data interpretation questions, these are some tips you can go through. Yeah, you can read that if you want now. For um, doing data interpretation questions faster. Yeah, one important thing is eliminating uh, wrong options or weeding out wrong options is very important in this chapter. Like many other chapter here also, eliminating options 
will save a lot of time because data interpretation question mainly the problem is this is lengthy it is time consuming but it is a two mark question that you are getting most of the time it is a two mark sure shot question in gate exam so spending that much time if you prepare well definitely that two mark if you can get in two minutes that is definitely worth it so that is why yeah one second not able to see the chat some technical issue just a minute okay now it is fine so uh, yeah eliminating wrong option is very important and in some questions answer only the questions asked do not answer or calculate things which are not being asked for some irrelevant things will be there don't uh, unnecessarily analyze it read the given data very carefully even the minutest word may be important all these things we will discuss with the questions itself if there are more than one graph and table sometimes questions will have one pie chart and a bar chart or one table and a pie chart you have to understand the relationship between them very clearly and given data may be insufficient for interpreting some answer option you can leave those i mean that options you can read uh, leave uh, exactly bhavana reading question is very important understanding the question correctly so avoiding uh, options that is not possible to be interpreted from the given data you can avoid that and go to the next option so these are the basic things again with questions we will discuss more about this so we will start with this question gate 2020 problem where a bar chart is given again once again reminding you those of you are attending this class if you are getting benefit from the session please like this video and share this video to maximum people and please uh, invite your friends who want to attend this live right now any gate aspirant preparing for uh, pure science gate or uh, btec gate uh, i mean engineering stream or pure science stream gate general aptitude section is common so please invite all your friends all who you think will be benefiting by the session copy this link and share it to them so that more people join this session so try this question i'll give you one minute all of you try this Question is visible now. Just a minute. Okay, so I'll start explaining. So the bar graph shows the data of the students who appeared and passed in an examination for four schools, P, Q, R and S, the average of success rates of these four schools. Read the question carefully. Question is not asking um, total value and uh, total, uh, uh, total pass, total appeared, the ratio of it and that average. Question is asking average of success rate. I will explain how that is different. So average of success rate means you need to find the success rate of each school separately. Don't add it together. That is a small mistake that some people can make. That past students total you find, total appeared students you find, take the ratio. That option is also there in the four options. But that is not the correct answer or that is not the correct way. Average of success rate is asked. So you need to find the success rate of school P. School P ka success rate kya hoga? 
280 students pass over 500 students may. That is the meaning of this now. Number of students is given. School P, past students is denoted by this purple region. 280 students passed out of total 500 appeared. 280 out of 500 is the ratio or we can say success rate of school P will be 280 out of 500 into 100. Mathematically speaking, number by total into 100. Na? So, 280 by 500 into 100, if you are good with mental arithmetic, 280 by 500, you can think 28 by 50, which is 56 by 100, that is 56 percentage directly. Or use a virtual calculator and calculate it, you will get 56 percentage. Same way you think about school Q. School Q, 330 students passed out of 600 students appeared. So, 330 out of 600 is the fraction we need or 330 by 600 into 100 will be the answer. 330 by 600 into 100 will be 33 by 60. 33 by 60 will be 55 percentage. 55 percentage you will get here. School Q success rate will be 55 percentage. Similarly, school R success rate will be what? 5, 455 out of 700 into 100. Simplify it. You will, Sorry, into 100. 455 by 700 into 100 will be 420 plus 35. That will be 65 percentage. And finally, school S success rate will be 240 by 400 into 100. 240 up, uh, passed out of 400 into 100. 240 by 400 into 100 will be 60 percentage. You need to find the average of all these success rate. Ye char success rate ka average find karna hai. Char success rate ka average means 56 plus 55 plus 65 plus 60 by 4. Sum of observation divided by number of observation. That will be the average success rate. So that when you do it, you will get 59 percentage as the answer. Option C, 59.0 is the answer. Is this clear to all of you? Please respond in the chat whether this is clear. <laughs> so that is how this question can be done. Very simple question. Understand the data properly and answer it. Gate 2020 problem. So then try this question. 2021 gate exam problem. Yeah, yesterday's YouTube live also, I think we have discussed this. Make a try. Okay, some of you got it right already. Do we need more time? Let me know in the chat. If you have completed, mention the answer in the chat. Or if you are not getting the idea, mention that. I will explain.
Okay, so we'll explain. The question says, the number of students passing or failing in an exam for a particular subject are presented in the bar chart. So, year 1, past students are denoted by this shaded region, 50 people passed, year 2, 60 people passed, year 3, 50 people passed and failed students are denoted by this dark region, 10 students failed in year 1, 5 students failed in year 2, 3 students failed in year 3. So, this is what the question is saying. Now, students who pass the exam cannot appear for the exam again. That means year 1, 50 people passed. Those students have passed. They cannot attempt one more time to improve their mark or anything. That is what the question is saying. So, this year 2, sorry, year 2, how many people are appearing? All those people are either new students or the students failed in year 1 and appearing again. Only failed students can appear again. So, past students cannot appear exam again. Students who fail the exam in the first attempt must appear for the exam in the following year. That means year 1 failed students, these 10 students should appear in year 2, not in year 3. And this is also given, students always pass the exam in their second attempt. Year 1 failing students will pass in year 2, year 2 failing students will pass in year 3. That is what the question says. The number of students who took the exam for the first time in year 2 and year 3 respectively. Year 2 mein first time appear karne wala students ka number kitna hai. Year 3 mein first time appear karne wala numbers, students ka number kitna hai. That is what the question is asking. So, here actually if you understand the data properly, it is very easy. I will explain. Year 1. 50 students pass, 10 students fail. So, total number of students who appeared will be 60. Na? Is that clear? Total number of students appeared is 60. Similarly, year 2, total number of students who appeared will be 65. 65 will be total number of students appeared. Year 3, total number of students appeared is 53. This point all of you understood. Total students appeared in each year. Now, year 2, in the 65 people who appeared, total students who appeared, 10 will be from year 1, na? because previous year failed students should appear in this particular year. So, year 1 failed students should appear in year 2. So, yes, 65 students, may 10 students, yes, students. Eh? That means that 65 minus 10, 55 students will be new students who are appearing, na? Total 65 students appeared in year 2. In that 10 students is from year 1 question says so. So, remaining 65 minus 10, 55 students should be new students who are appearing exam for the first time in year 2. So, that is 55 students should appear uh, exam for the first time in year 2. So, 55 should be the uh, first part of the answer. So, 60, 65 cannot be the answer or first part of the answer it should be 55 hope that is clear two options are eliminated due to that now year 3 just same way you can analyze year 3 may total 53 students appear kia failed and passed together 53 students have appeared in that 53 five students are from year 2 from year 1 year 3 no one can appear year 2 failed students five students are appearing in this 53 or are there in this 53 so, that 5 subtracted will be the new students in year 3. Na? Year 2 failed students, if you delete, whatever remains should be new students in year 3. So, 53 minus 5, 48 new students in year 3. So, 48 should be the second part of the answer, not 53. So, option D is the correct answer. Hope this is clear to all of you. Please respond whether this is clear or not. Very simple question, last year's gate exam problem, this is bar chart, you just have to analyze. These kinds of questions, there is no theory or anything needed, just like I say in many chapter, this is how you involve into the meaning of the question, how you understand the data properly, practice is more needed in this chapter also. And I will give you as many practice questions as possible for you. So, if that is clear. Let us discuss another question. Try this question, gate 2020. Bar chart, we will discuss few first. After that, we will go to pie chart, um, tables. 
and also scatter plots sorry not scatter plot contour diagrams also if possible we will discuss today so try this all of you Okay, so many of you got it. Uh, which question, Mangesh? I didn't understand. So, B option, C option, multiple options. I can see the following figure shows the data of students enrolled in five years 2014 to 2018 for schools P and Q. During this period, the ratio of the average number of students enrolled in school P, students enrolled in school P average. And average of difference of the number of students enrolled in school P and Q. I told you the tip that even the minutest word can change the answer. Difference of students enrolled in P and Q is the denominator. So average of students in P divided by average of students Q minus P. Why Q minus P I am saying because Q is the larger value in every year. So that is what you need. Average of students in school P will be how much? School P will be 3 in this year, 5 in this year, 5 in this year, 6 in this year and 4 in this year. You can see that in this axis. So that is 3 plus sum of observation. 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 divided by 5. Divided by number of observation 5. Divided by Q minus P, the difference of Q and P. Difference of Q and P in each year you need to find. That is 2014 it is 1, 2015 it is 2, 2016 it is 3 and 2017 it is 1, 2018 it is 1. So average of that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 by 5. Here you should note that this 5 is common. Numerator or denominator 5 is common, so you can cancel it. And here you will get 3 plus 5, 8, 8 plus 5, 13 plus 10, 23 divided by here it you will get 8. So 23 by 8, that is option B, 23 is to 8 is the answer, not 23 is to 31. If you find average of P to average of Q, you will get this answer. That will be there in the options, so that you can get a negative mark. They will put that in the options for sure. So be careful, question is not asking uh, average of P to average to average of Q. It is average of P to average of difference of P and Q. That is why we have done this way. Hope this is clear to all of you. So if that is clear, let's go to the next question.
Yeah, try this question. This is a very interesting question. Okay, this is a pie chart based question. Let me see bar chart. One more interesting question we will discuss and then go to pie chart. Today I want to give you idea about all the types of question at least two, three examples I need to show you. This is a little time consuming question towards the end of the class if possible we will come to that. Okay, we will start a pie chart uh, based to question 2, 3 we will discuss. Make a try please, all of you. Okay, many of you got it right. Very good. Total expenditure of a family on different activities in a month is shown in the pie chart. The extra money spent on education as compared to transport in percentage is the question. So, to make you understand, I will take an example. If this total value is 100, for example, if it is 100, because we need to compare two things inside this total. Na? So, if it is total is expenditure of the month is 100, on transport it is 10 percentage that means 10 percentage of 100 that is 10 rupee on education it is 15 percentage that is 15 percentage of this 100 that is 15 rupee that means on transport it is 10 rupee and education is it is 15 rupees that means 5 rupee more that does not mean it is 5 percentage more it is 5 rupee more compared to 10 that is 5 out of 10 into 100 is the percentage increase compared to initial value or final value minus initial value by initial value into 100 that is how you can find growth percentage now but i will suggest don't use any of those formula look into this and say 10 plus what is 15 10 plus 5 is 15 that 5 compared to 10 is half of 10 now half of 10 is 50 percentage or 5 by 10 into 100 is 50 percentage so 50 percentage is not the answer not 5 percentage some of you can mistake this 10 and 15 difference is 5 percent so 5 percent is the answer that is wrong compared to the 10 percentage how much is 15 percentage that is the question compared to 10 percentage 15 percentage is only 50, it is 50 percentage more not 5 percentage more 50 percentage more so that is the idea hope that is clear to all of you why 50 is the answer i just took the example of 100 to make you understand if you don't want 100 
you can generalize if 10 percentage of x is becoming 15 percentage of x so the increment is 5 percentage of x compared to 10 percentage of x so 5 percent of x by 10 percent of x into 100 that way also you can do it that will also give you 50 percentage itself so option c 50 percentage itself will be the answer please respond whether this is clear or not if that is clear let us go to another pie chart based question itself yeah try this here a pie chart and a table is there as i told in questions where multiple graphs are there you should understand the connection between them correctly so this is a gate 2021 problem make a try all of you Any answers? Very less number of answers you can see. All of you try. Little time consuming, I agree. Understand the connection between the pie chart and table correctly, then it is easy. Okay, so I will explain. Some of you got it right. Wonderful. So, the distribution of employees at the rank of executives across different companies C1, C2, C3 up to C6 is present in the chart given. So, this is the executives C1 have 20%, C2 have 5%, C3 have 8%, C4 have 32%, C5 have 25%, and C6 have 15%. This much percentage of what? That is what finally given total number of executives across all companies. All companies mean C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Together total 10,000 executives are there. So these percentages are compared with respect to 10%, 10,000. So total number of executives are 10,000. That is subdivided into this pi regions. So understand that. 
Now, the what is the bar chart? Let us understand. So, the ratio of ratio of executives with a management degree to those without a management degree in each of these companies is provided in the table. So, sorry, uh, not bar chart, the table. What is the table saying? Table is saying in C1, 3 is to 2 is the ratio of management degree holders and non-management degree holders. If management degree holders is M and non-management degree holders is N, M is to N ratio is 3 is to 2 in C1. In C2, it is M is, uh, M is to N is 1 is to 4. That means for one management degree holder, four non-management degree holders are there. That means if you take an example of five people, one will only be management degree holder there. Remaining four people will be not having a management degree. Not having, yeah, not ma having a management degree. That is what I am in short saying, non -man not management degree holder. Even if grammatically it is not correct, hope you are understanding what it means. So, this 1 is to 4 we need, this 9 is to 1 also we need. Why we need those two? Because question is finally asking total number of management degree holders among the executives in companies C2 and C5 together. C2 and C5 only we are concerned about. Forget about all the rest. C2 and C5 only you think about. C2 management degree holders to non-management degree holders is 1 is to 4. C5 it is management to non-management is uh, not management degree holder is 9 is to 1. So, first of all we need the value of or number of people in C2 and C5 now number of executives in C2 company and C5 company. Question says 5 percentage of the total 10,000 people. Question says total 10,000 executives are there. 5 percentage of 10,000 is going to be 500. So, in C2 there are 500 executives and 20 percentage of 10,000 is going to be 2,000. C5 company there are 2,000 executives. Now, we need only management degree holders in this 500 and 2000. In this 500, C2 it is 1 is to 4 ratio. 1 is to 4 ratio means 1 management degree holder, 4 not non-degree holder will be there. 2 management degree holder, 4 plus 4, 8 not management degree holder will be there. That means if you take every, every 1 out of 5 person will be a management degree holder there. That is how you can write it as a proportion. Na? The ratio can be converted to a proportion. 1 is to 4 means 1 person management degree holder, 4 non management degree holder. That means 1 plus 4, 5 people if you consider. 1 out of 5 person will be a management degree holder. That means 1 fifth of this 500 people, 1 fifth of 500 people will be the management degree holders in C2. In C2 it will be 1 fifth of 500. Hope all of you understood it. Because if you are not understanding, for example, if I am taking um, taking an example, in this class, in this class, the vegetarian to non-vegetarian ratio, it is 2 is to 3 means what? If I consider 5 people, 2 people will be vegetarians. That is 2 out of 5 people will be vegetarians. That is the meaning. 2 out of 5, na? 2 is to 3 will be vegetarian to non-vegetarian ratio. That means... Out of 5 people, 2 people will be vegetarians. Out of 5 people, 3 people will be non-vegetarians. Same way here we have considered management degree holders, non-management degree holders. 1 is to 4 ratio means 5 people, 1 person will be management degree holders. 5 people, 4 people will be not having management degree. So, that is why 1 fifth of 500, that ratio converted to proportion, that part you should understand correctly. That's a simple thing, school day math only, but... Uh, hope all of you have understood it, mention it in the chat. So, C5, what about C5? <coughs> Company 5, management degree holders 9, non-management degree holder 1. That means, out of 10 people, 9 people have management degrees. 9 is to 1 means that, na? 9 plus 1, 10 people consider kya to, 9 people ko management degrees hai. That is, 9 out of 10 of the total people, of the total people in C5. C5 mein total kitna people hai? 2000 people hai na? So, 9 out of 10 of 2000 is the total management degree holders in C5. 
Now you need to find these two and add it up. This is 100. This is going to be 1800. 100 plus 1800 will be the total answer. 1900 is the answer. That is total number of management degree holders in companies C2 and C5 together will be 1900 option C. Is this clear to all of you? Please mention in the chat whether this is clear. So, that is clear. Let's go to the next question. So, here how we connected the table and pie chart. Hope you all understood. These kinds of questions you should practice more to save more time. Okay, I will show you one more question related to pie chart. There are other types of problem still remaining. So, try this. This is a very simple question. Pie chart only totally involved. Gate 2020 problem. Make a try, all of you. And those of you uh, who haven't subscribed the channel, make sure you subscribe. Uh, as I told, there is um, uh, some days I may not take class. Some days there will be slight change of timing. So if you don't want to miss any class, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting update whenever I go for this live class in this channel. And also hit the like button for this video that will help this video to reach more and more people. And invite your friends in the upcoming class. Tomorrow I am planning to take a class. Uh, if tomorrow I am taking class, I am trying to take data interpretation itself if time allows. For giving you more practice on this chapter. Okay, some of you got it right. So, I will explain. The two pie charts given at right show the data of total students and only girls registered in different streams in a university. So, this is the total students enrolled in the university for different streams. This is a girls enrolled in the university for different streams. So, pie chart gives total students distribution in different streams and girls students distribution in different streams. Boys students distribution in different streams is not given. If the total number of students registered in the university is 5000, like the previous question it is mentioning, total students or total number is 5000. That means this pie chart total is 5000. This 5000 is divided as 20% of 5000 is arts, 15% of 5000 is management, 20% of 5000 is five, uh, science and 15% of 5000 is commerce and 30% of 5000 is engineering. And the total number of registered girls is 1500. That means this pie chart sum is 1500. 1030% of that is arts, 15% of 1500 is 
management 25 percentage is science 20 percentage is commerce and 10 percentage is engineering then the ratio of boys enrolled in arts the ratio asked us boys in arts divided by girls in management girls in management so this is what the question is asking but girls in management you can easily find because the data is given 15 percentage are the girls in management total girls are 1500 so 15 percentage of 15 percentage of 1500 will be the denominator of the required ratio but what about numerator boys in arts how you will find boys data is not given directly so boys in arts you can find by finding total people or total students in arts minus girls in arts total students in arts which is given by this first pie chart minus girls students in arts which is given by the second pie chart that is 20 percentage of this 5000 20 percentage of 5000 20 percent of this total minus 30 percentage of this 1500 30 percentage of 1500 so find these values 20 percentage of 5000 is 1000 minus 30 percentage of 1500 is 450 divided by 15 percentage of 1500 is going to be 225 that is 550 divided by 225 is the answer when you simplify it you will get cancelling by 25 you will get uh, 22 by 9 22 by 9 that is 22 is to 9 option d is the answer Hope this is clear to all of you. Please respond whether this is clear. How option D is the correct answer. So these are few pie chart based question. Then I will show you some other types of problem. One time they have asked, not one time, one year they have asked multiple questions on this uh, contour lines. This is a good uh, type of question to understand these contour lines you are seeing in the newspapers tv channels especially when weather forecast or uh, weather reports or something related to uh, uh, like um, uh, earthly things earthly things in the sense some um, natural calamity or land um, about some geography it is mentioning you have seen these kinds of lines but how many of you have observed that lines properly i don't know so that is what the question is testing here whether you are able to interpret this contour line so i will just give you start with a very simple question try this question all of you try this question
okay many of you got the answers uh, but uh, unfortunately it is wrong okay that is what is the idea you should learn in contour lines you may be thinking that this is up this is down this is up no that is not how to interpret contour lines that is as it is mentioned contour line you should understand contour lines is actually we can say a three dimensional uh, plot we are restricting in this two dimensional plane that is why you should understand it carefully contour line joins locations having the same height above the mean sea level the following is a contour plot of geographical region contour lines are shown at 25 meter intervals in this plot 25 meter intervals means if this is 550 this is yeah look at this this is decreasing when it is going outside so this is going to be 525 as it is 25 meter interval each lines are 25 apart so this will be 525 more 575 line so how you should understand that is this is like p is on the top of the hill p is top of the hill 575 575 is the height of this p is above that above that that is the meaning above that and next next lower level is 550 you can think step by step you can think next lower level is 525 you can think 525 next it is 500 next it is 500 <clears throat> next it is 475 so 475 <clears throat> next 475 so this is the idea so p is above 575 but look at it how this blue line is going from 575 to 550 region this is 575 this is 550 this is 525 this is 500 after 500 it is going to this is 47 this is 475 region then again 500 look at this from 500 this is 500 this is again 500 itself then look at this this is going to be 550 means this is 525 so 575 550 525 500 500 525 that means it is increasing and then uh one second sorry decreasing and then increasing are you understanding that point it is down first and then up the movement is from this region to 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 this region. Look at this. This is 575, 550, 525, 500, 500 again. Again, it is increasing. Look at this. It is decreasing and then increasing because this is 525. This is 550. Look at that. Where it is going from this region, 500, it is moving to 525. When it is crossing here, it is crossing 525. Then it is crossing 550. Then it is crossing 575. It is increased till now. But from 575, where it is going? From 575, it is going to 550 region. This 575, it is touching 550 region. Are you understanding this point? 575, 550, 525, 500. Down. And then 500 is increasing to 575. Up. Then 575, it is decreasing again to 550, down. So, down, up, down, option C is the correct answer. How many of you understood this? This, once you understood it, every question like this can be done very easily. But please mention whether this is clear or not. Please respond. <laughs> so, you have to think these lines as like top level next top level next level next level next level likewise you have to think please mention in the chat how many of you are clear if it is not clear mention that also which part is not clear if you can mention i can explain more i will show you two more questions like this so that you get proper idea so this contour lines if you try to understand clearly then in as i told in daily life scenario when you see a news channel when you see a newspaper you can observe these kinds of plots there many a times okay it is clear most of you are saying you have understood it then if you have understood it can you try this gate 2017 another question with respect to contour lines read it carefully and answer please
any answers Yesterday 11 a.m. I have taken another session on data interpretation where I have discussed more questions. You can check out that also in the Unacademy channel. You can search general aptitude with Christy Vergas. You can see the playlist I have taken in Unacademy channel also and in my uh, channel also. Okay, many of you got the answer. Let's see which is correct. Uh, the, a contour line joins locations having the same height above the mean sea level just like previous question. The following is a contour plot of a geographical region. Contour lines are shown at 25 meter interval just like the previous question. If in a flood the water level rises to 525 meter, which of the villages PQRST gets submerged? Submerged means get under water, get below the water level. Uh, so that means below 525 meter, which of, which of these villages are there? So let us understand this villages position correctly. The highest position is above 575. Just like previous question, this is 550, 25 meter difference means the one inside will be 575 because one outside is lesser. So this is when it goes inside, you have to think topmost position, second topmost, third topmost, likewise. So from here, topmost, then next topmost, next topmost like that. So this will be 525 now because 25 meter interval means 550, next contour line seeing should be 525. Next will be 500, correct? Then this is again 500. This is 550 means this should be 525. And this should be 575. And this is given 450. This is 500 means in between one should be 475, 25 meter interval. Now you, now you can clearly denote where they belong to. So 575 there is a position 550, 525, 500. 475, 450, uh, yeah, 450 till that much is enough. So, uh, 575 above, who all are they? Who all are there? Above 575. <clears throat> above 575, P is here. P is above 575. Above 575. And then, where is Q? Q is between 525 and 550, between 525 and 550, so Q is here, look at this, this is 525 region, this is 550 region, Q is coming in between means above 525, below 550, that is the idea, so Q will be above 525, we denote it, and then next one R, R is, <coughs> sorry, this is 500, this is also 500, so R is, uh, above 500 we can say above 500 below 525 r is here and s is this is 475 this is 450 between 450 and 475 between 450 and 475 s is here and t is between 500 and 525 500 and 525 so t is also uh, in this region itself t is also in this region itself Sorry, sorry. R will be between five, uh, R will be between 475 and 500. Yeah, that does not make a difference, but still we will denote it correctly. R will be between 475 and 500 because look at this. R is here now. This is 500 line. This is 475 line. So in between that is this. So R is here because this is 450 means this is 475. That way also you can understand. So, R is between 500 and 475. So, R is here. Now, everything is clear. Below 525 is the villages that is getting submerged. Below 525 means T is below 525. Below 525 above 500. R is below 525. S is below 525. So, R, S and T. R, S and T. Option C. Many of you got option C. Very good. So, I hope you have got an idea how to interpret the contour lines. Is this clear, all of you? <clears throat> so, if that is clear, one more question on contour lines. Yeah, try this as a homework question. 
tomorrow also we will discuss data interpretation itself if uh, my health allows tomorrow same time 6 o'clock we will meet with more questions on data interpretation but before that you can try these questions and come you can take a screenshot or you can post this video later and take a screenshot also uh, these questions please try and come tomorrow we will discuss all these questions or most of these questions as much as we can uh, we can discuss tomorrow and yeah this is one more contour line question so try this also we will discuss this tomorrow and other type of question we will discuss tomorrow and conclude this chapter and day after tomorrow most probably we will be able to take Venn diagram question data interpretation it's sure shot two mark almost sure that every exam previous year question papers if you check almost 95 percentage of the time there was one question minimum from this chapter in every question paper very rarely only they have missed data interpretation very rarely so almost sure that you will get a question from this and two mark you can get if you practice well so practice these questions we will discuss more tomorrow so thank you all for attending this session if you like this session please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed it subscribe it so that you will not miss any update and you will get uh, notified whenever i go live for the sessions and daily free classes free videos are also uploaded make sure you can watch that if you are preparing for csar daily free videos on csar also are uploaded and be part of our learning community in telegram and whatsapp so that you get more updates and more materials and download the mobile application for further learning tomorrow 11 am there is another free class uh, on speed distance and time in the unacademy youtube channel that also you can be part of you can search this search this keyword to get that also that's it thank you all take care all of you have a good night bye bye see you tomorrow